you get a high fever and it feels like your, bone, your bones are all broken, the pain is so severe. And uh, many of the people had that, but there was one girl that touched my heart in Kalinda, and it was the last day, in fact, I was done seeing patients. And this mother came and sat and thought her baby was asleep. And I asked my translator, I said, is she okay? Because the mother's face looked kind of sad. And the uh, translator said, no, she's not okay. And I, I jumped up and I looked at the baby and I could see she wasn't asleep, she was unconscious. And uh, I just picked her up and uh, I just, I felt like the whole mission trip was wrapped up in this baby, like if this baby didn't live, I, I, I just couldn't stand it. And the feeling of being in Haiti and your child is so sick that it, it'd be two hours to drive down to the city and they don't have money to do that anyway. So I could grab this baby, I was in the triage area and I just started running with her to our, to our clinic. And I pulled her in my arms and I said, get all the doctors, get everybody. And Dr. Carol Avaraj came running and Dr. Joyce came running and all the medical students. And we were trying to squeeze water into her mouth and we weren't set up to have IVs for a baby. And uh, we're, excuse me, we're giving her like suppositories for Tylenol and uh, she just didn't look like she was doing well. And I just, I can't tell you the pain that I had, thinking she's going to die. And I just said, God, don't let her die. You know, I just, uh, I had so much emotion, like, don't let her die. Come on, Jesus. And I maybe about 10 minutes later, all of a sudden she opened her eyes and I realized she's going to live. And one of the medical students said, you want a sucker? <laughs> And she took the supper, and I was just like, thank you, Lord, thank you. But uh, so, there, you know, some of those stories that were, if we weren't there, you know, she wouldn't have lived. So we saw dozens of dental patients, people that had big abscesses in their mouth, and if Dr. Arnos didn't come, they wouldn't have had to leave. We started two bakeries this year. So we're hoping that we can get the people to feed themselves in an inexpensive manner. And with Father Roosevelt, we started two orphanages. One for girls and one for boys, and they're really rough. If you, if you saw them, you wouldn't be very impressed. But many of the kids that were there have never slept in a bed before, and it's just such a wonderful thing. I wanted to end that part of what we're doing and with some good news. Many of us read the papers and see TV, and there's all kinds of bad stuff. One piece of good news I have for you is that in the last few years, Hart has actually had to have a waiting list to go. And you have to understand that each missionary pays their own way. They pay their airfare, their room, and food. And yet, they wait on a list. And you know, we already have a waiting list for next year of people that wanted to go but couldn't go. And it just amazes me. Each person, after we ask them, you know, how did it go, they all say, I feel like my life has changed. I feel like my heart is filled with joy and gratitude. But we can't do these, uh, the things that we do in Haiti without the help of a lot of people. So I was asked to say some thank yous to some critical people. And I asked that you would hold your applause until I'm done. First, we'd like to thank Monsignor Hampton, our, our pastor here at St. Paul on the Lake, who has supported us uh, 